So I've covered quite a lot of ground in the last few videos. I'm just gonna to try to use this video to cover the rest of the sort of features that most FM synths have, just so you got a good grounding in general FM synthesis terms. Obviously I've been raking it in on ad revenue, so I've decided to buy myself a Yamaha FB01 to show some of the old school sounds that we can get out of Yamaha FM synths just to sit alongside the Mega, because it's more of a true representation of what is possible on old hardware. The FB01 is eight times multi-timbral, so we should be able to create a drum kit on that. That's the plan anyway, over the, f over the few videos I'll do on drum synthesis, there will be kicks and snares and the hi-hats and such that you can make on any FM synth, and we can build a whole kit on this thing. There's some really peculiar stuff going on with the way that it uses modulation and velocity though, so I'm gonna tack that onto the end of the video just to show you how strange it is. I feel like I kind of backed myself into a corner by choosing this particular synth, but there we go, we, you know, at least if you've got one of these, you can see what's going on. So at the end of the last video, we touched upon how with extreme levels of modulation, we can get sounds at the top of the keyboard that don't sound very nice at all. And I said I was gonna talk about why this is, so let's do that. So I've got this initialized patch here. I'm gonna play this C. I'm gonna turn up the feedback level of the modulator to around 80, and then raise the level, and we can get that saw that we should be familiar with by now. with the harmonics extending up towards the top of the graph. But if we zoom in on the top part, we can see if we get really high levels of modulation, those harmonics start to be reflected back down. This is referred to as aliasing. And they don't sound too bad at the lower part of the keyboard. Kind of palatable. But if we go up the top here, Starts to sound really nasty in higher octaves again. Start to sound like sort of angry R2D2 stuff. So if you notice the spacing between these extra reflected harmonics is kind of inconsistent. That's what gives it that kind of horrible ringing tone. So we can ring those in if we want to. What we need to do is lower the modulator level. Obviously if we do that by using this, we're going to affect the lower part of the keyboard. There's a way that we can scale that modulation down as it gets higher up the keyboard. So on the third menu, on the Reface DX anyway, we can see we've got this uh, key scaling. So this is going to bring that modulation down the higher we get up the keyboard. The way it works on this machine is that everything's centered around middle C. So this is the split point. On some equipment, you can adjust that split point, but it's fixed on here. So we can play by ear and just lower this modulation, so turn it down. until it sounds more palatable. So we haven't changed anything down here, but as we go up the keyboard, that's sorted that out. So this is designed to give us tonal control over the length of the keyboard, either to create consistency or inconsistency if we want to. The DX7 in particular was lacking in brightness and modulation as you go further down the keyboard, so you could heighten this if you wanted to create brightness. But not in this case, we've maxed out our modulation our levels for the envelopes are set to max two. So if we went in and tweaked this up, it's not going to do anything. So we have to make space for that if we want that. That's something I'll probably cover in a bit more detail when we need it. It's not just for modulators though. We can apply this to a carrier too. So I'll operate a one and do the same thing. I can lower the level of this. It's middle C is going to remain the same. it'll get quieter as it goes towards the top. This is something we can use to create multi-timbral patches even on uh, synths that don't have multi-timbral capability, kind of. Uh, it's something I'll explore a bit later in another episode. So another common feature among FM synths is rate scaling. This is rate scaling of the envelopes. This is something designed to model the behavior of acoustic instruments. So take this piano, for example. Notice how much longer the low notes take to decay away. versus something much higher. So if we take this sound that we created earlier and just go into the envelope for operator one, bring the level down and add a bit of a fade like we have been doing, something somewhere sensible. You can hear that no matter where we go, we're getting the same speed of envelope. 
we can change that here. So if I go in and turn up rate scaling, below middle C is going to be slower and above it's going to be faster. Maxed out, we can get much longer down here. And if I just hop up an octave, this is really short. So we can get quite close to that piano-like behavior. So here's another example of how acoustic instruments behave. If we play a note softly, few harmonics appear, but if we play it harder, you can see there's much higher harmonics involved. So this is something that FM synths are generally very good at. It's also the reason I really like the Reface DX because it has a velocity sensitive keyboard. Not all of them do. That's also the reason I don't really mind the fact that it's missing a mod wheel, even though it would have been nice. But anyway, we'll talk about the mod wheels when some more equipment turns up, hopefully. So on each of the operator screens, we have velocity sensitivity control. This just means the level is scaled depending on how hard we hit the key. So at the moment, you're gonna press this gently. It's gonna be loud bit it hard, still loud, it's exactly the same. If I turn this up, we'll be able to hear if I play gently, it's quieter. But as I play harder, it's gonna sound louder. So this is controlling the level of the carrier at the moment. Carry equals volume and modulator equals tone, remember? So if we turn this down and go into operator two, we crank up velocity sensitivity for operator two, this is gonna change tone depending on how hard we play. So it can get some really expressive sounds this way. So let's do the usual cheesy putting it all together style tutorial and I'm going to show you to make a clavinet patch. So clavinet is as funky as hell, it's what Stevie Wonder played on Superstition. It's an electroacoustic instrument so it's got acoustic strings that are amplified uh, by pickups. It's really expressive and also has those acoustic properties that we talked about. So I've initialized the patch as per usual. I'm sticking with the standard algorithm, all the operators in a stack. And let's go to level. So I'm gonna turn up the level of operator two all the way to the top. And then I'm gonna change its feedback to about 36. And that gives us this sound, quite a bright tone. And I'm gonna change the velocity sensitivity of operator two to maximum. So once again, we get that kind of behavior when we're playing. I'm also gonna make operator one slightly velocity sensitive, uh, not as much as number two, but it's nice to have a little bit of change in volume as well. And I'm gonna bring down the level of both operators to zero um, over time, which we're better to see here. So that's doing nothing at the moment. And then both of them, I'm gonna change the rates here to 55. So we've got that sound. So this patch will track quite similar to the disgusting bass sound that we made uh, last time, but the devil is in the detail. There's just a few little differences. Then I'm gonna bring the rate scaling for both of them up to maximum, so that we've got the biggest difference between the bottom end of the keyboard and the top. So really quick up here. but nice and slow down the bottom. So we can see on the graph, we're just getting a few harmonics generated by this pair. So I'm gonna add a third operator in, just like we did last time. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna take this harmonic information, whatever we're playing, and copy it up a few times. So what I'm gonna do is set the ratio of operator three to nine, and then bring its level up to 40. So that's going to take those harmonics and copy them up a few times. But the thing about modulator stacks is that if operator two is not really doing very much, operator three is not going to have much effect because there's nothing for it to copy. But then the more I hit the key in this example, the more of those copies are going to appear. So with operator three generating all the high harmonics, it makes sense that we use Level scaling on that one, just to bring it down a little bit. I was experimenting earlier and I found it need to be about 30 and that just sort of stops this top end from generating too many harmonics up the top of the keyboard. And that's all there is to it really. We can just slap a bit of reverb on just to make it sound like we're in a real acoustic environment. 
I'm going to go with 30 and 50. Which, if we go to the effects section, we can see we've got depth and time. <laughs> So let's have a look at the FBO1. I've got that set up with this ancient Xboard 49 controller keyboard here with nice yellowing keys, um, just because it's nice and easy to flick between velocity sensitive keys and full velocity, uh, so I can show you what's going on. So one editor option is the FBO1 sound editor that I've been using for a while. The interface is a little bit clunky and I don't think it's been developed for quite a while, it looks a bit Windows 95. It works, but there's a few bugs in it. So I also tried Edison by Sean Luke and I found there's one little tiny bug in the current release that makes uh, this difficult to demonstrate. So I reached out to him and he was awesome enough to fix it pretty much straight away. So thanks very much to him. I put a link in the description to Edison. It supports about 40 different synths. It's an amazing program. You know, you, know, you can edit all sorts of different models, uh, save the patches down to library and that kind of thing. Really, really good. So yeah, go and check that out. So here's the basics of the editor. We've got this main screen, the global one, which is for the whole patch. So the LFO lives in here, and then the algorithm and things like pitch routing and the feedback control. And then you've got per operator controls on these two tabs. So one and two, and then three and four. So if we stick to this algorithm and go to operator one and two, one is the carrier and two is the modulator. And you've got these strange looking amplitude modulation carrier on modulator off switches. The, this isn't this isn't Sean's terms. This is what I, Yamaha actually called it, and it's a bit strange. But this is the important bit: ampl amplitude modulation. This routes the LFO from here to different operators, so we can switch on and off per operator for things like uh, tremolo and uh, filter, like wub wub sounds that we did in the previous video. But it's a bit strange because this messes everything up. Um, oh well, everything messes everything up. <laughs> right, so if you play normal, we've got a nice sine tone, standard initialized patch. We, the level controls are here, so this is all the way up. And then we can turn up operator two. And we're modulating operator one with it. But it sounds a bit dull, a bit strange. We're not getting very much modulation at all compared to what we're used to. So we've got, maybe you think, oh, we've got a level address control here. This might turn it up. No, that turns it down. And after some poking around, which it, it does take a while for me to work this out. If we turn the modulation, amplitude modulation off, we get a brighter tone. So if we turn off the amp LFO, the modulation level goes up, right? Okay. So this is something we can use to get slightly brighter tones. Um, uh, obviously at the moment, there's no velocity sensitivity. So let's turn up the velocity sensitivity for operator two here. And as you can see, as I'm playing harder, I'm getting even brighter tones. But the thing is, unlike the, on the reface, if I play gently, we don't, we don't return to a sine wave. There's still some modulation going on. So we've got the top end, we've got the brightest bit, and then the, the bit below it, but not right down to the bottom. So then if you then turn off, <laughs> so if you turn amplitude modulation back on again, we then have a full range. So the only way to really achieve the brightest modulation is to have velocity sensitivity turned on, and either the amplitude modulation on or off, and we have to make sure we're playing hard or we're sending full velocity. So I could do that here. I can edit um, velocity curve, turn this up to max. And then, so that's something you've got to bear in mind with the FBO one. We need to turn up velocity sensitivity for higher modulation levels and either playing hard or sending in high velocity uh, information from your sequencer. And then depending on whether you want to use amp modulation or not, again, that's going to change things. So it makes things a little bit complicated. So just to round off, I've imported the clav patch directly from the ROM bank on the FB1 just so we can compare. Quite a similar thing going on, apart from we've got this little branch going off to the one side. I've got to go over how branches work, so that's something I'll cover a bit later on. We've got a high level of feedback here, which is operator four, and then operator two is feeding operator one. So if we turn off, well, let's just play it to start with. It sounds like that, it's a bit. It's velocity sensitive to volume, but there's not a lot of velocity sensitivity to tone. 
which is a bit different to what I did. Uh, but if we turn off operator three, so now we're just hearing these two. We've got a very similar situation to the way we started our patch, with just a few harmonics. And then this extra stack here is gonna be exciting those top frequencies. If we turn that back on again and turn off uh, operator two. Actually, these operators aren't one to one, they're one to 0 0.5. So that's gonna be creating a slightly uh, band passy type sound, but not that much different from one to one. Um, but it'll sound like it's an octave lower than what we did. So if I turn off, now turn off operator two, you can see that, that uh, these frequencies, nine and 12, are contributing to all this top stuff. And again, we have key scaling and rate scaling for the different operators set up. Um, it's a bit more finessed, obviously. They had more time than I did. <laughs> but it's very similar in a lot of ways. So that about wraps it up. I hope you find this tutorial useful. Please let me know in the comments if you did. Uh, I'll be coming back with another video in the series. Once again, not really entirely sure what that's going to be. It might be the start of the drum synthesis thing. We've pretty much covered most of the common features that are present in most models of synth. And then we start getting into stuff that's a bit more specific. So that could work. <laughs> yeah, so let's see how it goes. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again. Cheers.